I'll keep the version of the story relatively short. I always joke the long version is over scotch, the short version is over beer, <laughs> uh, but it's always entertaining. So we started Red Octane as an online video game rental service. So if you think all the way back to Netflix, when they were still shipping movies, we were doing that, but with games. And that's kind of how we got into the game industry. Right? One of the games we were renting at the time was Dance Dance Revolution, oh. DDR. That was a really fun game, and a lot of our customers really enjoyed it. But they were asking us, hey, you rent the games, but do you sell or rent the dance pads? And for months, we were like, no, we don't do any hardware. We just rent video games online. After we figured out that we had to actually generate revenue and <laughs> raise money, that's when we decided, well, why don't we start selling these dance pads? So we were renting games on our website, redoctane.com. And then on the side, we had this little tiny business that was like, you know, buy dance pads. And that's really what helped us learn about music games. And it also sort of what helped us learn about hardware. So after about six months of reselling these dance pads, we were getting a lot of feedback from our customers. You know, fans, especially video game fans, love to tell you what's good and what's bad, right? Either, oh, this is great, or here's some ideas, or boy, your product, you know, really sucks. You know, it's breaking, or it's broken. And so we took all these ideas and the feedback that we got, and we decided, well, rather than just buy and resell, we decided, why don't we try to make dance packs? It took us a year of knocking on their doors, but we finally got in and were able to sell into brick and mortar retail. So coming off of holiday in 2004, you know, we had a good sort of sales year with our dance pads, which were very high margin. And we decided, hey, we need to expand our business. We didn't do software at the time. So we went to a lot of the Japanese video game publishers, Konami, Sega, Namco. They were the ones who created music games in Japan, but they kept them all in Japan. Dance Dance Revolution was one of the few games that they brought to the U.S., so we went to them and said, hey, why don't you bring your music games to the U.S.? We just wanted to make hardware, right? Because that was kind of our business at the time. And universally, they told us, well, we don't think there's a market for music games in the U.S. Did they give any reason or kind of like? I think, you know, if you look back historically, they said outside of Dance Dance Revolution, music games just don't sell in the U.S. Startups are all about creating new markets, right? They're not about sort of following generally or expanding markets. They're about creating new markets. So we believed it. We didn't know how big it would get, but we decided, well, if they're not going to do music games in the U.S., then we had to do it ourselves, right? At that time, our business was dependent on them. If they didn't release music games, we couldn't make hardware for them, right? So the only way to sort of take control of our own destiny for our business was we had to get into the video game publishing business. When did you realize that like this Guitar Hero product was starting to really take off? Like, was there kind of like a turning point? Yeah, you know, there were a lot of different sort of little hints, especially at the beginning. I heard that somebody at Sony had booked a conference room and set up Guitar Hero for the entire day and people were just going in and playing the game, which was pretty fun to hear. And then we also heard that they were playing the game up at Nintendo, which again, we didn't make the game for the Nintendo platform. We only <laughs> made it for Sony. So they were bringing the Sony PlayStations at <laughs> Nintendo headquarters and playing Guitar Hero there. Hope you enjoyed the little video. Go check out the full podcast episode with Kai Huang over at the Startup Island Taiwan podcast. Amazing episode. Link below. I guest host there from time to time, interviewing various people about the Taiwan startup community. If you like it, check it out, subscribe, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys later.